Today, we're gonna to take a look at the top five e-com websites that I've found for this specific video. If you guys have any other ones that you wanna talk about and you think that one's better, I don't know what you're talking about. Let me know in the comments. Anyways, the first one is going to be MuseArt. Now, all of these have e-commerce capabilities, and it's interesting to see if we actually preview in the browser. The first one, MuseArt templates.withflow.io, is that they don't have to be boring. E-commerce does not need to be boring. Now, if you're someone like Amazon that you have thousands and thousands of products, then maybe it needs to be a little bit more utilitarian. But in this case, I think it's quite cool to see what we can do for e-commerce. So this is obviously going to be some sort of art dealership or something like that. This is a template, so you can use it for whatever you want. But let's see if we can actually access the shop by going into this here, scroll down to shop, and we can see that we have these portraits, pretty cheap if they're originals, I must say. But let's see if we can buy this book. So we can add it to cart. We have the different quantities here, which is fantastic. We have big imagery on the left, a description on the right, and then this animation here that shows us how far down on the page we are, which helps the user understand context of the website so they know that they're not exactly they're not lost, right? They know where they are. We have a couple of guarantees here, so quality assurance, free shipping support and secure payment, which is going to be important for e-commerce. But let's see what happens when we actually add to cart, continue to check out, and we can see that it's going to be disabled because it's just a .webflow.io site. So we need to publish it and do all that stuff. But anyways, we can see that this is great because as we change the amount of orders needed, it's also going to change the subtotal, which is fantastic. But anyways, we can also see our cart here and see what else we can explore on this site. But anyways, I think what's actually going to sell the site is going to be this interaction in the beginning where we can use the mouse as a hover effect with this parallax over the images. And then we can just scroll back and see all the product information as well as go to the shop and do all that kind of stuff. So next one is this Opala website. And I think it is super nice. We have that text effect on on appearance, which is amazing. We got a video down here that has a custom video light box. And then we have just a YouTube, which is fine. There are some custom video solutions. If you don't want to use YouTube for your, your videos like this, Vimeo is one of them, a little bit expensive, but there are a couple that are kind of web flow focused, which is great. But anyways, if we take a look at this right here, it feels like it's a real life SaaS site, which makes me feel I don't know, like I can trust it. And it's something that I'd be happy to build my SaaS landing pages on. We have the typical layouts though, which is fine. There isn't anything too crazy going on, which can be a pro and a con, I guess. The bento section here is really nice. You guys know that I love these kind of things. If we had some sort of animation, I think it would bring the, the, the level of the site up a notch. We do have these text effects, at least in the hero we did, but I think if we had some sort of mouse effect on these images or something like that, it would bring the site up a notch. But just as it is, I think it's fantastic. We have different variations of the landing pages, so maybe there are a little bit more. Yeah, I feel like this video back here could be maybe just a GIF if it's slightly moving, but I think it's fine. Okay, then we have some... Okay, there we go. That's nice. This interaction here always works well for timelines for workflows, things things like that, that have kind of like a one, two, three step. That's really, really nice. And then we have these sections here down below that are your typical tabbed sections that would usually change in the the image on the right, but in this case it doesn't, which is fine. Let's take a look at landing page C. So that's super nice. We have the video as a small thing here, as a CTA almost. And that's actually quite nice because it doesn't feel overwhelming as the main thing we can explore more of the product without having to to just see the video but anyways most of the site is going to be quite similar they're reusing a lot of the sections but i think that's fine especially when the sections look as nice as, as they do we have this super cool footer here with this gradient effect let's take a look at the blogs and the pricing pages maybe pricing b okay and then pricing c ecom all right cool we have a switch here which is amazing. And then the case studies, the blog, let's actually go into case studies. Okay. So this is more like a blog section, another Barcelona. Interesting. All right. And then let's go into blog a. Okay. So this feels like it's a mobile first site that would work really well, but there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. Let's see blog B. Okay. That feels a bit more traditional. And then blog C this has your typical three tier blog section. Let's click into that. Okay. And then it's just a typical blog. So I think it's quite a simple layout, but the styling of it makes it feel Quite professional. We could add a couple more imagery in terms of interactions, animations, things like that, that would take it up 
quite a few notches in my opinion, but I think just the way it is, is a great start for any SaaS, any landing page SaaS that you only need something quick, good to go, done. On to the next one. So this next one is gonna be using Framer rather than Webflow. So you can see here that this is a fashion e-commerce that allows you to buy a lot of products, it seems like, via Lemon Squeezy. So it's an interaction between Framer and Lemon Squeezy, which in this case works pretty well. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the product pages and all that stuff. So we can go into shop, we can check out the products, and we can see that it's a pretty basic product page. We have the H1 here, the price, description, we can see various imagery, and then all these products are part of the you might also like which is connected via cms or something related to the product right we can take a look at more here and we can see that this is a pretty simple e-commerce with different filters here so we've got t-shirt jacket pants filter by all we can go back to home we can see the men's collection let's go into kids here okay so we can see the same thing and then on home it just takes us back to kind of like all right if we click on shop so this is a pretty simple but effective e-commerce in my opinion we have the about section as well and then down into contact so yeah it's simple e-commerce but it allows us to build something from the get-go this is your typical framer contact form let's see if we can search for something here so let's say uh men's so that's actually quite fantastic we have a search function that shows us all the different cms items that are available and if you take a look at down here on the bottom left we can see that when we hover over these items it shows us the link so we can see that this is actually going to take us to a real life link which allows us to build on top of that, which is very, very good. Go back to the homepage and we can actually go into shop directly from this button. So from this search, I think that actually helps the, the site a lot just because it's a simple site, but maybe there isn't enough to kind of, you know, make it feel like a super high-end template. But then this search, I think in my opinion, helps us do that. So if we go for shirt or men's shirt, let's go by shirt. Yeah, we can search for anything that we need here, which is very good. Next up for this e-com is gonna be project-template.webflow.io. And here we can directly buy a template. But the cool thing about this is that they have so many different layouts available. So let's go ahead and just see what they have in this case. So they have 25 premium pages, 70 sections, 20,000 components. We have the Figma file included so that you can actually design your full site in Figma first and then build it in Webflow with whatever component you decided to use. But let's go ahead and see the first page. So this is kind of what I had in mind when I said that the one of the previous sites didn't have enough interaction for the user. This is a very simple layout, same exact thing, text in the middle, but just this this Alex Wright, Jonathan Kimber interaction, I don't know, it makes it feel like there's more to it than just a simple layout. We have another Bento here, very popular with a lot of these logos. Uh, sorry, a red logo here. A lot of these sites, it seems like these Bentos are everywhere right now and I don't blame them, I love them. But anyways, this kind of design is also everywhere. It seems we have these super, super minimal icon packs and then the lines that kind of show that everything's interweaving and integrated all that stuff. And then we have, okay, that's a really nice section here. So we have the text here, it gets sticky to the top. I would prefer that it gets sticky a little bit sooner, maybe here or something, or maybe even in the middle. But in this case, it gets sticky to the top. So I'll have to live with that, but we can always change it, of course, inside of Webflow. So in this case, we have the sticky on top and then the image that just keeps going one, two, three. Proven results, a nice appearance of those stat numbers and then your typical tabbed image changing section here that moves on to the next sections. So let's just take a quick look at maybe features V2, see what that looks like. So more bento stuff. And this is great because in my opinion, bentos are nice because they're easy to get right because all you need is a little bit of text a decent image and the layout just kind of takes care of the rest. It makes it feel like it's not just a simple static site with text on the left, image on the right. This feels like, I don't know, it's something more. It's something a bit more interactive with for the user. It's not just a simple boring section, even though the text amount would be the exact same. So why not make it a little bit more, a little better for, for the user to interact with? Okay, so we've got this simple slider here. Very cool. Very good. Let's check out this feature single, whatever that means. Yeah, okay. So then in this case, this is what I actually meant. This section, if we reduce the text a little bit, we could add in a bento for the amount of content that we have and it would feel easier 
to digest rather than this big block of text, which, which most people don't read anyways. But anyways, there's just a bunch of pages here that we can take a look at forever and ever. This is actually pretty nice. This 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 tabbed feature with all integrations or email marketing, customer support, e-commerce, project management. So pretty, pretty cool. All right, what happens if we click on the get started? It gives us this get in touch button, directions, schedule a demo, and then the pricing plan, pretty cool. So the last one is gonna be pop SaaS. Now, what we see here is quite similar to the previous layouts that we've been seeing. A lot of SaaS have the same vibe, which is very white or black if we're going for dark mode text in the in the center a lot of the times and then we have some sort of imagery like bento the previous three have had super similar layouts but it's what you do with those layouts that takes it up a notch so in this case even something this simple i mean it's kind of silly how simple it is and it just makes it feel like it's it's more of a it's more of a premium site so when we hit a specific point in this image it separates all the content and it kind of disappears which is great but anyways, back to the bentos we have. <laughs> it's, it's very, very similar, but in this case, I mean, it works, right? We have these gradients that also help elevate the bentos. It's not just all super gray with a couple of images. We have these standalone blocks that kind of separate the content and the imagery. So it's not so, so boring. All right, then we got your typical one, two, three kind of sections that change the content. Something weird is happening here though, where when you click these different buttons, it changes the height, which I'm guessing is is because it's um, it's not a fixed height, which is usually fine. But in this case, it feels a bit distracting. I prefer if it was just a standalone size, maybe make it larger than it needs to be so that it doesn't keep changing back and forth. Even just that, it's also changing the, the horizontal size. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you're gonna be purchasing this one. And then we have a timeline here, which works super well. Just one, two, and three, changes the imagery. That's all you need. Testimonials with Twitter or X integration. And then we go down to the blog, this super nice CTA with the image in the back and that same gradient that we had up here. So it kind of helps tie everything in. We get that same imagery a lot around here, which is great. And then let's see the rest of this. So this feature section, one thing I don't necessarily enjoy is going to be this glass-ish gradient. It feels almost metallic. I think it can be improved. Even this one up here, this Gaussian blur feels better in my opinion, but my opinion is worth whatever you, you want it to be. So <laughs> you can take that with a grain of salt. But anyways, here we have the same kind of, of section where the content changes, but we have this pop-in effect, which is quite nice. All right, more bentos because that's what today's sites need okay and then let's see what checkout looks like so we have a really nice checkout we haven't seen many checkouts actually because they're either not designed or not ready to be published with but in this case we do have it so that's pretty good let's take a look at the 404 good enough all right and then let's see integration okay we have a lot of pages here that are either cms or kind of utility pages this checkout as well password and then regular pages like the pricing one here and that to me might be a little bit confusing these buttons aren't kind of clear enough which one's active the yearly one's active right now but it feels like it's disabled and then this is the monthly one so in my opinion which again in my opinion is, is worth whatever but maybe the the active one should have the stroke around it and then the disabled one should be maybe white without a stroke so it's kind of like obviously very clearly turned off but anyways oh that's really nice we have this table comparison section here let's see how that scales that's always a fun comparison so yeah scales great let's see what else we got going on here we have this faq which changes based on what category you want it to be which i've never seen before which is super nice it's actually quite smart so people don't get overwhelmed with the amount of questions it's just general privacy documentation so if i have an api question blah 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 Cool. All right. So that's been five e-commerce templates slash clonables for Framer and Webflow. If you guys have any questions about these sites, I mean, everything's going to be in the description. So if you guys want to check them out, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the vid. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.